know? And look, check this out. Today, I have a special guest right here in the lab with music and all that LLC. None other than one of the, the most profound and well-known, world-renowned, uh, I would, but it's a long list and we don't have that much show time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, very good friend, mentor, uh, Mr. Joe Wright Jr., the CEO of Block Records USA out of Midlothian. This is one of the hits right here that's playing um, our generation. So we're going to turn that down and let's see what's going on with Joe. What's up, bro? Talk to me, man. You got it, man. Just happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Come on now. Uh, you know, I, I know Kanye just left, so, you know, I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> He had jokes. Well, he, he was here, but he didn't know it. I just had him on the team. I had him on my phone. Oh, Kanye, you're a guest in the in the lab. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's let's get right into it, um, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna I'm, I got I got these. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about these later on. But for right now, um, Joe Wright Jr. Um, is a little bit of everything, man. I, I mean, honestly, when it comes to entertainment and 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 the industry. If, it, if it's been done, he's done it. So let's find out a little bit about Joe. Joe has a very uh, great story on how he got into the business professionally, and uh, I'm going to let him tell you. Absolutely. Uh, well, of, of course, Sam, you know, we, we grow up. I grew up in Cabrini Green. If anybody knows what that is, the buildings aren't there anymore. Right, right, right. But... Uh, the they used to do wop outside. Outside, everybody hung out, and the older guys would be do wopping, and so we would just be doing our thing, you know. So it, it just caught me. It's like what, what these guys, you know, this is cool, uh -huh. right? And then come to find out, once I started realizing who people were, you know, like Jerry Butler and. Uh, Major Lance and uh, these are like phenomenal <laughs> for you younger people. These names that he's naming are phenomenal people in the music industry that were icons in Chicago. So go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. Come on now. And my aunt actually lived in the row houses near uh, Chicago Avenue, and she lived next door to uh, his family. So she knew him coming and going, but. What that did is caught my ear. It was like, I like this, right? And so, um, as time go on, you know, you go to school, you try. Uh, my grandmother started me playing piano and singing at an early age because she was a choir director. And, uh -huh. You know, and, and I think that made, played a part in why my ear was geared toward the doo wop, right? And so. Plant that seed. That's it. And so as time went on, I went on the music college. And the first person I met, the music teacher, the first met, person I met was uh, Carol Lim's Dwarfin. And she was an expert in African music. And so she was teaching us about the whole African music thing, you know, uh, a Tiffany call and response, uh -huh. so on and so forth. And it was like, you know, just again, you know, I'm, I'm soaking this in, right? Plus, I was already playing percussion. Right, right, right. Latin and African percussion. Right, he's myself. an amazing and drummer and percussionist. <laughs> he is, as, as his sons are, too. His sons are amazing <laughs> musicians, too. So, go ahead, Joe. Yeah. So, now, here it is. I'm piecing it together, right? You know, the, the, the ability to understand African and Latin music. But then now, this is the roots of African music, right? So moved on, went to Millican, toured with the Jazz Lab Band all over the world, uh, and we would record a record every time we got back from a tour. And that really, really was the, uh, what do you call that, an epiphany? Uh -huh. Because the guys sitting in that glass room, I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know what that was about, but I wanted to know. Right, right, right. And the, the great thing about it, when I got to Chicago, uh, there was a studio by Paul Serrano's studio where Earth, Wind & Fire uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. recorded. And a friend of mine was managing the studio. 
So he let me come in, hang out, started, you know, getting the buzz, so on and so forth. Anyway, I started the uh, once MIDI, M-I-D-I, yeah. with music in the keyboards mm -hmm. and drum machines and right, things right, like right, that. Right. So, things got electrified. Yeah, so I started composing and uh, using drum machines and MIDI with my song. And next thing you know, I'm demoing songs, and I meet people that want need songs. Mm -hmm. And one of the persons I met was Sonny Sanders. Sonny Sanders was one of the uh, writers of Soulful Strut. Which is a song that's been done by yes, everybody yes, across. That's another classic another that he classic. brings up. This is how long he's been doing this, you all. <laughs> yeah. And through Sonny, Sonny said, Hey man, you know, you know who, who Eugene, Eugene Record is? And I said, uh, don't you sing with Shadow? He goes, Yeah. He goes, Well, he's looking for some songs. I said, What? He's a uh, he's he First class that, songwriter. Why is he looking he for stuff? He pretty much wrote all that stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, yeah, he's looking for stuff. He said uh, he left the group. He's got. Uh, he's doing a Christian album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I gave him a demo. Next thing I know, I get a call from Eugene. Hey, man, how you doing? I like this stuff, man. Come on over here and let's talk. So he lived in South Shore, right? That's what down the road though after the highlights <laughs> when Eugene did that when yeah. he wanted to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. cuz I remember that project that specific project and uh and you working on that with him yeah. I really oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. I distinctly <laughs> remember that but hold on a second Joe let's go back for a minute cuz this is where I was trying to get him to go y'all and he went into the whole Joe history <laughs> Joe had a uh, 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 a situation in his life when he was younger that that really Gave him the direction of music, and uh, I, that's the story of, of how you had to make a choice, or you were you were going down the wrong path. You got it. I was looking at ten years. Remember, he said he grew prison. up in Cabrini Green, <laughs> so you know that the path could have been wrong from the beginning. Anyway, so go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. <laughs> For something I didn't do, but I dropped. Most out of the time, of, it is. Yeah, I dropped out of high school in my junior year, and got picked up by the police hanging out on the corner. And so uh, at that point, it was like, whoa, I had just started uh, hanging, I just started being in, uh, with a group out in Evanston. Uh, and it was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want my life to end up like this. Mm -hmm. So I just said, if I get out of here, you know, pray, if I get out of here, that's it. I got out. I didn't even hang around nobody I hung around. It was like, I, di I didn't exist. I was incognito. Change your surroundings. <laughs> it'll change your life. This lesson is for the youth. And for a couple of you older people out there that, hey, I've had to change my surroundings to change my life before. So <laughs> know this. It's not something I'm saying. It's something I've done. So yep. go ahead, Joe. Yeah, so that was it. And once I made that transition from hanging out, and all that being a garage band musician to playing with these guys in Evanston who were really serious musicians. They were about practicing. They were about studying your craft, all of that. And it was like, okay, wow, bam, yeah. So that's what I needed. And uh, along with that, uh, while navigating those things, that came and went, of course, mm -hmm. but... It was after I got back from Milliken where uh, the opportunities came that I didn't even realize. Uh, a person introduced me to the, the, the executive producer of Hallmark that does the... Uh, the Christmas card people? The Christ, yeah, the Christmas card people. Okay. They do all, all other cards. Okay, yeah, but yeah, yeah. They do... But every, I mean, they've known for cards. Yeah. Hallmark is the card people. Every year yeah. they did a, a, a record, an album. Okay. You know, uh, Vanessa Williams did one, you know, and you could you go around the list of all the people right. that did a Hallmark album, right? Well, he said he came to me and said, Hey, I'm doing this Halloween thing, right? He goes, Let me know what you can do. I'm thinking, huh? <laughs> but the reason why that I didn't get spooked 
No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I had uh, just did, I just did, matter of fact, he was the one who introduced me. Uh, no, he wasn't. I was teaching uh, aerobics at the East Bank Club. Okay. Which is, uh, you know. I told the, you he's isn't done a it, lot. Yeah, it's not the you kind. never know when you see a Joe. Where there, you never know where, where, or never expect a Joe Wright sighting at some of the places. So we, we're talking music and he's talking. He was an aerobics instructor too. Yeah. And, and the, the teacher said to me, hey, I'm going to be doing a, uh, and, and everybody knew that I did music. Plus, they liked the way I mixed my music for mm -hmm. the aerobic class. Right. And so she said, hey, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing a video. And that was kind of the new thing now, you know, aerobic videos. Right, right, and right. And uh, uh, you think you want to put some music on it? And I was like, hmm, how do I do that, right? <laughs> well, uh, lo and behold, I did a demo of just some instrumental music in uh, that kind of timing, you know, beat yeah, 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 for yeah. a minute. Yeah. Minutes, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> if you're doing something fast, you that know. 185 beats a minute. That, <laughs> well, no, that, that's frantic. That's frantic aerobics. Yeah, sometimes those aerobics <laughs> seem like they were going like that, too. Like, man, look at this, this bass here. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, like the right. 125, 130 beats a minute, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And so she passed it on to... Uh, Esquire magazine, who was hired her to do it, and they said, "Cool, we like it. Let's go. Let's use him to do the music." So here I am. I'm doing the music for a major market corporate client. Right, right. And it worked. Yeah. So you know, nothing is done with. I had a little four track cassette at that time. Mm -hmm. But we went into the studio and did it, you know, because I played the drums, and then after I played the drums, you know, I put percussion on it, yeah. stuff like that, so that... Track by there's, track. There's a track by track. Yeah. So there's an engineer yeah, 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 yeah. that can help. I wasn't trying yeah, yeah, yeah. to do everything. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was my first foray into a, a national uh, client. Yeah. And from there, it kept going, and... and and I, I believe that that helped me to understand, uh, to think up here right. rather than thinking down here. Right. Or just thinking local. You know, man, if I could be the man locally, I'm good. But, but now, let me say this, though, and, and I have to say this to you all. Locally, I, I've known Joe probably for about 30 years. I met Joe after he was working on a project with a co-worker of mine, Kevin Lewis Carr. And then I met Joe um, at the... Um, at the release party, and, and and Joe and I hit it off because he, he liked the way that I was hoping Kevin market his stuff and sell his stuff, and then, you know, he was like, yo, who are you? And then we found out we had a whole lot in common, uh, which one of the things was the desire to succeed in music at at, at, um, at any rate we could. with the And, and once I heard Joe's vision and, and what he was trying to do with music, it, it made it so much more. So I have to now acknowledge and, and, and thank him for being the greatest music mentor in the world because a lot of what you all see, a lot of what you all see that I do, whether it's a small promo for someone's business, whether it's even some of the pictures that I take to bring to life, things of that nature, it was Joe that told me, man, there's so much creativity in you that you got to get out and share with the people. You know, God has blessed you with so much and it's up to you to share that gift. It's not for you pretty much is what Joe told me. And throughout the years, what, maybe 30 years now, Joe? Mm -hmm. He's yeah. been like the person that, you know, and even if you look around here, occasionally there's something that I can't <laughs> kind of figure out, and I'll call Joe. I, hey, I hit him up when he came in this morning. I was like, hey, Joe, what about this problem right here? Can we figure this out? He's like, this is what you do, Sam. So it's this relationship between Joe and yeah. I have worked. It's really worked, and it's worked to the point where, Joe has helped me secure a lot of business and marketing and promotion for people who did projects and wanted to just get some exposure, wanted to get on Spotify, wanted to get on other uh, digital outlets, um, be able to um, have their music played on radio. 
Um, before internet radio, I was the person that Joe would say, here, okay, go do your thing. And I would walk up into the radio station and say, you got to play this mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. So um, he's been really instrumental in my career. And I love him for that. And I thank you 100%, bro, because I wouldn't be... I, I wouldn't be doing what I was doing if there wasn't somebody like you behind me pushing me all that time. Um, I want to get into Joe's newest thing that he's got right now. I want to let you all hear a portion of it because this is from his new multi... Joe's doing a multimedia uh, project. He's doing a multimedia project with... Um, Oh, He's doing a multimedia project, Be Well, and um, Joe, give us a little bit more of um, what your multimedia project is about, man. Absolutely, man. Be Well is a, it's going to be a film, and it's going to be about the epidemic of opioids that we're, uh, we're in a crisis with, <laughs> and so... In the story, it's a father and a daughter. The father is an ex-athlete who is on prescription opioids, painkillers. The daughter thinks he's taking vitamins as he's composing. He's also a songwriter. So he's also a pop got he's published and he's he has to write some hits because the publisher gave him an ultimatum. Well, during the course of Three days, he's writing these songs. He's popping opioids left and right. He ends up having a uh, overdose, and then she, the, the daughter realizes that uh, that's what was happening. And so, "Be Well" is the the theme. And along comes uh, a good friend of mine. I do audio books with is Barbara and Martin. That's her vocal coach. Okay, Jaden Sue. And so Barbara would send me little clips of her doing her recitals and stuff. And so I said, hey, do you think Jaden would be interested in uh, singing a song for the movie? So she said, I don't see why not. I said, okay. So, And like so, you sure heard, this is a, a whole movie project that he's scoring. And yep. this is like the, one of the major songs, Be Well, featuring this young kid. It's one of the major yeah. songs on this music, this this movie project. Yeah, she was twelve, she's thirteen now, but she did a great job on the song, man. And so, uh, as she, as I would listen to her voice in the tapes that uh, the the you know that Barbara sent me, that's how I composed the song based on her voice, her vocal range, and just the fact that. She was a kid, you know, and this father is uh, doing this to his daughter. They actually, he's a widow. He lost his wife to a train accident. And the daughter now realizes, well, maybe, maybe my mom couldn't deal with his uh, addiction. You know, and so, yeah. So uh, I'm putting music together first. Because I got a vision how it's going to go at work. Uh -huh. And so music to me is really what helps make a new movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Definitely. Now, because mm -hmm. even in, I mean, in chase scenes and things like that, exactly. the chase is so much more dramatic and gunfights are so much more. And anything that has to do with so much more because of the sound design behind it, there which a lot of people don't know that that's what that's called. That's called sound design. Sound design. They, they, <laughs> Take me the and then that's why when you hear music, uh, and it's got vocals and so and like we're listening to, it's called a soundtrack because that's the sound that's tracking the vibe of the music. So you know it's it's uh yeah, man that sounds like a good of project the scene, Joe. Of the scene, the scene yeah. yeah of the scene right yeah and that sounds like a, a good project Joe. Um, let me ask you this. So we've got when are you expecting to? Hopefully have the music and the project completed um, totally as a whole package. A year, no. two years, uh, sooner. Check this out. Uh, 
my wife Rhonda and I were involved with the missions group out in Nashville. And there's a young oh, lady. Oh, we've been out there before. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, yes, sir. <laughs> and there's a young lady who's in the mission group who's a filmmaker out of L.A. And I, I said, I was talking to Rhonda. I said, you know, I need to talk to somebody in the business about what I'm doing because I don't want to just waste time. Well, we talked last Wednesday. Awesome. We, we Zoomed last week. Awesome. awesome. And man, that call gave me exactly what I needed. What I needed. She said, don't worry about putting together a trailer because you're fundraising. Right. While you're fundraising, you don't want your funds used up. Okay, stop that. right here. He's fundraising. Exactly how's, what's going on with that? How's it going? And then what if there was somebody out there who decided that they want to help you raise funds or contribute to your fundraising efforts, what would they have to do? What right. is Well, they could go to our um, website, okay, which is Captivating by Design Digital or Organization or Digital Org. Captivating by Design, by design Digital, digital Org. Digital Artistry dot org. Okay. Right. Sorry um, about that. No problem. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that I have that information on the the release when we do this yeah and it, it walk them through every through they can how they can give through paypal yeah so on and so forth so i appreciate that definitely come on now you know how we operate man but i, I want to say this <clears throat> she said instead of trying to make a trailer make a fizzle reel I, that's the first time i heard that mm -hmm. fizzle reel what's that that sounds like some hip hop yeah, yeah, yeah. language, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, "No, um, actually, a fizzle reel, fizzle, fizzle reel, could be doesn't doesn't even have to be made with uh, video, huh?" Her and her husband did a, vi a movie that got played on PBS, and she said, "The movie we did before that was just a little short, uh, blah blah blah, right?" But before we even did that, we did, you use graphics, text, yeah. different, and, and made that up as different scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. for what they needed. And that got people in, interested yeah. and involved. That's how they got their first short done. And then out of the short, was able to really raise the money they needed to get the major. Well, that's how most people want to, they want to, you want to whet their appetite so that they can see exactly what it is they're getting involved in, and they're it usually like they used to do back in the, in the in the days when they were 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 curating music before they got music curators like they do now. Was that thirty seconds would tell you if this was going to be a great song or not? Right. Remember how the Temptations, <laughs> how Barry Gordy and all of them used to sit yeah, in a yeah. sit in a room, while everybody in the office sit in a room, and then they say they play the song and say, "You know, the thirty seconds of who likes it." Everybody raise their hand. Right. You know, they got consensus. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's a good thing. Um, so after the, I want to say this too, Joe has the the, the innate ability to take. Um, if you if you could go into his studio, you would be amazed at like some of the things you see around the walls of my studio. Uh, people who who music we've worked with, things that uh, uh, projects that I, I've worked on, things like that. Uh, most of them are projects that I worked on with Joe, um, and Joe has the ability to. Uh, always, if there's a new artist um, that wants to be on the shadow of a doubt, they don't care. They just want to put together a project, get a CD out, and have something that, that sounds good. Well, Joe has the ability to take it and, and not only make it sound good, but make it marketable, too. So there's a lot of music that you probably run across, probably see, have probably heard on some of my social media that was music that Joe was behind, including... Uh, Greg Screen, who you saw in the last interview, Greg Screen's project, Africa First, and the Steppers Club originated <laughs> in uh, Greg's house, but was completed pretty much in Joe's studio with Joe being co-producer on it. And um, and then we, we finished up one of the tracks over at uh, Capital Fun Studio with our friend Lazo Taylor Jr. What's up, Pezo? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so... Um, ladies and gentlemen, th these are this is another brother in, in the Chicago area. I mean, there's a lot of people 
in, in, in and around Chicago that do music, but there's nobody that I've known that's been doing it as long and as successfully for as and, and still to this day, his only source of income in a business as Joe Wright. I mean, this is what he does. This is pretty much all that. Well, you've done some acting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we already know he was an aerobics <laughs> teacher. He's done acting, but he's a sound engineer and, and he's a writer and a producer. And, I mean, he actually taught me a lot of the ins and the outs of uh, the, the behind the scenes paperwork necessities ah, in order to the be. Business. Yes, yes. <laughs> the so let's. Touch base on that. Before, yes, that's where I was getting ready to go. With it. That's where I was getting okay. ready to go. The most important aspect that I wanted him to mention is how important the paperwork is and the business in order for you to get paid for what you do. <laughs> when uh, the director of the East Bank Club, they were they had a room where they wanted to have people like gather the dance and stuff like that, the members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, she came to me and said, hey, can you put something together? I said, okay, yeah. So I put a band together, you know, and uh, I, I didn't have, I was missing a keyboard player. Richie Davis, who's the originator of the, the Cats. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Chicago Cats. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Smith. Right. And, and Richie Davis. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I called Richie. Because Richie was on the gig. I said, I, I'm looking for a keyboard player, Rich. He said, call Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, another artist that I've worked <laughs> with because of Joe that I helped release and put his, get his, put his release together because of uh, meeting him through Joe. So I called Kevin. Kevin came, did the gig. It was cool. He was the man. But found out that he worked for Butch Moore Stewart of Joy Art. Which was That's the Uncle jingle, Butchie and the Live Uncle House, the live house. From, the Tom from the Tom Joyner Morning Show and the McDonald's commercials with most of the black kids that you see in it. You got it. Those yeah. are his children. <laughs> yeah, well, he was one of the in-house arrangers yeah. for Butch. Butch. And, and Butch is a good guy, too, man. We, we work with Butch. Well, Butch is a well, good guy. Rip. Yeah. Rip Butch. He, yeah, he, well, Butch he was, was a good guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, through Kevin... I got involved with singing jing jingles. Yeah. And we would be working on jingles because Kevin started his own company called Prophecy. And we would be working on stuff together. And one day I said to him, I said, hey, man, I write songs. You write jingles. Why don't we, why don't you, you know, do some writing with me? Co you know, co-writing. Yes, yeah, sir. Or, or collaboration. That's it. Yeah. So he said, cool. Right. I gave him three songs to work on. And one of them was Pray You Should. And lo and behold, uh, a good friend of mine who knew somebody who knew Pop Staples heard he was looking for songs. So I submitted the three songs Kevin and I worked on. Got a call Just back. Pop Staples are the Staples singers he's talking yep. about. Got a call back. Hey, this is Pops. This is Pops. Uh, I'm coming. Where you guys located? You know. So he came over and loved it. Next thing we know, he leaves with all three songs. Probably a year later, one of them shows up on his new album off of uh, Virgin Records. Mm -hmm. But no paperwork. <laughs> so that's a problem. You have, uh, when you do a record with a record company, there's paperwork. Yes, sir. When you do a record with an independent, maybe there's an agreement, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's not like that official. Because when a major label does something, they don't want you to come back suing them. Right. And so right. that's why they want uh, every duck in, the, duck in the row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, what you're saying is, is you should be doing the same thing with an independent or if you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, whatever you're make doing, sure your paperwork make is sure straight. Make sure your paperwork is straight in order and that everybody agrees on the splits, yes, sir. The, the percentages, the amount of this, the amount of that, and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. 
and well, what your title is in the, the project, exactly. what did you do, and that's what's going to be recognized in the paperwork that you'll be compensated for. You got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I learned that and, from and you. I know a lot of people yeah. worry about sending uh, the music off to the copyright office. Yeah. And you know, that's Old that's, school. That's good. That's it, old school. That's old school. Even though you can yeah. do it digitally now. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But that's old school, yeah. But I learned the lesson from James Mack. James, of course, did all the strings for Earth, Wind, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Prolific arranger. Man, I walked into the studio. <laughs> well, I didn't walk into the studio. He invited me because I was taking his class at Harold Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't taking it for credit. Just taking it because everybody said Mack. you need to you, whoever yeah. well, you need to get take James Mack class. Yeah, yeah 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 well he gave us a four bar assignment I brought back a whole song with it. he said man come in my office oh wow <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble and I had a copyright form filled out in my back pocket I'm thinking well if he likes the song maybe you know he'll sign off on it right so he said, yeah, man, I like what you did. That was cool, right? And I said, yeah, well, maybe it could, you know, can be a song. And I pulled out the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he, did, he did, did just what you did. He laughed at me. <laughs> and, but guess what? He said, look, I'm headed over to the studio. Come on. I walk in a 40-piece orchestra. Now, that's like being in heaven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, Joe? I mean, you actually exposed me to something like that when you took me to the studio to record um, the uh, what's the name? What song was that we were doing? Uh, what it wasn't totally awesome woman, but the song that had Orbit Davis and Steve. Oh, Bison, that's uh, Where the Father. Where the Father, Steve yeah. Eisenman, and had a uh, 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 oh, uh, yeah. Richie, Richard, Richard Rich, Patterson. Richard Patterson. And and, and uh, Kevin, Daryl Parker. Yeah, Par I mean, Kevin it was it was uh, it was some of the most amazing musicians that I was aware of from and around the <laughs> Chicago area who were very well known. And who, I mean, Richie was with David Sanborn, and Daryl has been with Chick Corea. And these guys have you know have done some things, you know. Like and and uh, he takes me in the studio and he tells me he wants me in the sound room. Like and when I go in there, I'm, I'm, what the <laughs> what? And he gives me 1099s and says, okay, go get those guys 1099s, man. Make sure everybody signs off. <laughs> and so, hey, I, I, this is a funny story. We got we got to, because we got to shut this down. <laughs> and so I go back, oh, 10 like it is, once again, it's paperwork. Because each and every one of those guys was a professional. Each and every one of those guys was like doing music professionally with, on projects. One with Orba was with the Chicago Symphony, yep. still is. Yep. And that's then his, Richard. That's his group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Richard had Richard was actually on tour and came in, and then you Kevin is with the Cats, and you know all these guys were doing. But the thing that what was integral was was making sure that um, I got them ten ninety nines, got all of them signed. Everybody was like, okay, this is a, a, a work for hire. That's what and it was. It was a work for hire, and this is what you're getting paid, and don't expect anything else afterwards. This is what you get. But the beauty of this was this, that he's talking about going, I sat in that sound room, and these guys were in there, and when they started this song, I looked up because I actually thought I was in heaven, because <laughs> the music was so beautiful. And, and okay, and they're playing off of charts, because Kevin's charted all the music. <laughs> they're playing off of charts. Kevin's charted all the music. I'm he's sitting, conducting. Uh, yeah, he's conducting. Actually, Kevin's <laughs> actually with the wand conducting. So I'm sitting there, and I think his name was Larry, the, the sound oh, engineer. Oh, yeah, Larry Sherry. Larry was sitting, me and Larry are sitting there in the sound room, and so they play this piece to perfection. Perfection. <laughs> it was so beautiful. And and so then when they get finished, I don't know about them, but me and Larry was in the sound room breathing hard. <laughs> We're breathing hard. So he looks at me and he goes, man, what do you think? Because like, I think we had blocked off four hours or something like that. <laughs> we blocked off four hours, four hours to do this. And 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 they've done it perfect the first time. And he looks at me and he said, well, I don't know, Sam. It doesn't look like we're going to need all that time. And I said, <laughs> I looked at him, I said, let's give him to him one more time. To, for, for prosperity. Because the first, first time was so perfect, but these are the type of people that Joe has introduced me to. This is the type of work that Joe has done from the first day that I met him 
before his meet, he meeting me, he was doing this. And, and we've known each other for 30 years. So that just tells you how ingrained he is for you young people out there. That especially if you're in Christian, jazz music, something of that nature, and you want to know more about it, more how to get it done or whatever. Or if you're looking for just a little bit of guidance, this is somebody that you might want to follow on Facebook, things of that nature. This is somebody that can, can really be a guide for you. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they hit me up about things. But know this, you hit me up about things and can ask me questions, I guarantee you, if I don't have the answer, I'm calling him. Because usually, if I don't know it, he knows it. And a lot of what I know is because he planted the seed for me to find out more about it and to become more versed in it so that I, can, I could become a, 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 a reliable music consultant, uh, among other things. He's had me work as a sound engineer, and he's had me do background vocals, and he's had, like I said, he's had me do pass out 1099s and make sure everybody gets paid. So I learned a lot from him. Um, we're going to try to wrap this up. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to uh, say once again, man, I love you, bro. Love you, man. Definitely, definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Wright Jr., Blop Records, Probably one of the premier um, um, record labels for what we call urban inspirational music. Urban inspiration. Blop, B L A P O P, Black Latin Asian Pop, Pop music, music Ministry. And that's what it's all about, you know, because if, if there's one thing that we definitely have in common is our love of the Lord. And so uh, we just want to thank each and every one of you all for tuning in. I just want to interject Go ahead, bro. this <clears throat> to anybody that's trying to use their gift. In this world, there's going to be opportunities that come towards you. Just be cognizant of the fact that you're valuable. God made you as somebody with value. You don't have to lower your expectations or your value yeah. to be appreciated or feel significant. Be yourself. Hey. hey. I can't add much to that. It's your gift. God gave it to you, but it's not for you. Know that. Your gift isn't for you. It's for you to share with everybody else. Because if he didn't share his gift with me, I wouldn't be sitting here right now giving you all the opportunity to learn more about him. So once again, we want to thank you all for tuning in to In The Lab. Hopefully next month on In The Lab, because you probably be able to check this interview out for the rest of the month. If you don't want to watch it all at one time, you go back and check it out or whatever. But this is the way that I like to do interviews. I know everybody is doing things via Skype and things like that. I still like to get one-on-one -on -one with people, bring them in, get to find out a little bit, put it up there and give you a chance to check it out at your own pace. So if you know someone that's interesting that you think might be a good person to appear on In The Lab, let's get them in the lab. Uh, hopefully next month I'll have one of the hottest female vocalists in and around the Chicago <laughs> area. And I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you all. God bless. Much success in Jesus' name. Peace. <laughs>